thank you for joining us for another episode of Hope for Healthcare with Dr. Katie Cole in partnership with ICD Healthcare Network. Dr. Katie Cole is a holistic physician, organizational well-being consultant, and change agent, working with industry leaders and proven strategies to heal our national healthcare system and our culture of medicine. Stay tuned to hear today's speaker. Well, welcome to Hope for Healthcare. This is Dr. Katie Cole, and I have a very special guest with me today. His name is Bill Doherty, and he is the president, CEO, and founder of ICD Events, as well as ICD Healthcare Network. Welcome, Bill. Thank you, Katie. Nice to be here. Great to have you. Well, tell our audience a little bit more about your organization and how you are really impacting our well-being community um, in a positive way. Sure. Well, our, um, our conferences run the gamut. We do many different healthcare events. One of them is the Healthcare Burnout Symposium that's coming up in June. It's going to be June 23rd, 24th in New York City. And um, this one here brings together folks to talk about well-being and addressing um, physician, nurse leader, all clinicians' wellness. We had a as you know, in San Francisco in January. And previously to that, we were focusing only on physician burnout. That was the year prior. This is the third time we're doing it. Uh, and that's one conference that we do. Um, yes, yeah, so the Hardwiring Resiliency was in April in Boston. And how was that a little bit, how was that different than the Healthcare Burnout Symposium in January? Well, the Hardwiring Resiliency uh, builds, teaches you how to build tolerance to burnout. Mm -hmm. So that hopefully burnout um, isn't as big a problem when, if and when it happens again. So mm -hmm. we had folks from like the Columbine high school shooting and other traumatic events addressing how they reacted um, in addition to COVID and 9-11 and other um, big traumatic events. So that was another conference that we held. Uh, we have a conference called the Patient Experience Symposium. Uh, that's in a sixth year in September. We have conferences on healthcare, um, health and digital literacy. Mm -hmm. We have uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence coming down the road, uh, hospital at home program, and also a healthcare equity conference in November. That, you know, that is really amazing. You're, you're really the only person I know that is hosting conferences and educational seminars that cover the whole gamut of healthcare industry. Um, so what made you become interested in, in being part of this? Uh, well, I've been doing, I've been in the event business for close to 40 years by now. Uh, and I've, I've run healthcare, biotech, pharmaceutical, all kinds of events in the past. Uh, healthcare, I've always had a passion for uh, based on my personal circumstances um, at home. But also, uh, we started with the patient experience symposium in the sixth year, and we just grew from that. We had a burnout workshop, which turned into its own conference. And now our whole focus is not only on the two-day conferences that we run, but also the rest of the 363 days and connecting folks and uh, providing resources by way of our ICD healthcare network. So that's something new we're doing, including these podcasts we'll be um, hosting on the uh, network for folks to view. So when you attend a conference of ours, you get to um, view the network for six months to a year after the conference. Or if you can't attend, you'll be able to see all the recorded sessions from the conference uh, by signing up for the network. You know, that's great. And it sounds like you had gotten feedback along the way at some point, maybe about being able to access this information after the conferences for people that are unable to attend. Can you tell our audience a little bit more about why you decided to take your organization into a different direction uh, with ICD Healthcare Network? Sure. Well, after the during the pandemic, of course, we had the um, virtual events, which nobody was really too fond of. They had the avatars going from booth to booth and so forth. And, and you had to be there at a certain time, listening to a session uh, in front of your desk. And nobody wants to sit there for eight hours in front of the computer listening to sessions. So this is more like the Netflix model where you can pick and choose uh, what time of day, 24-7. You can watch sessions. You can watch them over and over again. You can also earn CEs and CMEs uh, on the network. So if you're listening to uh, sessions, you'll be able to um, get accreditation as well. So that's great news. So it, like for the upcoming June symposium, <clears throat> are you going to have all of the presentations available on your website for people to listen to even six months to a year later? Or how is that going to work? 
Yes, all the presentations from January are currently on the site. And after the uh, June conference, probably two weeks afterward, we'll be uploading all the recorded sessions from this year's conference. Uh, so if you can't make it in New York City, or if you do make it and you attend one um, track and you weren't able to see the sessions from another track, or if you want to hear the sessions over again, you'll have access to uh, view them. Well, that's great, Bill. That's that's really needed and necessary. And I know as a physician for myself, there are many times that I haven't been able to attend a conference. And especially when the virtual conferences expire within six months. Sometimes I don't even have a chance to finish all the presentations. So knowing that that is you're turning your organization also into a health media library, content library, I think is very exciting because then we have access to that information uh, long-term and can always go back and look at um, past presentations. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then, uh, not only for this conference, but the Patient Experience Symposium, the uh, Health and Digital Literacy, the Resiliency, you'll be able to see all of our previous conferences um, by attending one of our conferences and having access to it. Well, that's great. Um, I wanted to ask more about, you know, the ICD Healthcare Network. You mentioned that you're also going to be having possibly webinars and other educational opportunities. Can you talk more about that? Yes, we'll be having webinars, podcasts. Uh, we'll be hosting white papers. Um, the, the be a whole bunch. We're, we're becoming a media company rather than just a conference company. So there'll be a lot more in the near future that you'll be seeing on the network. So okay. it's just how you know, but it's going to get larger. Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, you have a very interesting background, Bill. And I know, didn't you run a, a bar and restaurant for many years? Yeah, 12 years. Um, I was in the events industry before that for about 25 years. And I got a little burnt out myself. So I moved from Boston and moved up to Maine, the coast of Maine, and bought a restaurant, which I don't recommend. Um, I did that for 12 years and on the, it was a seasonal restaurant. So in the winters, I was still helping to run events for companies like Hitachi Data Systems and other um, high tech companies. Um, then I acquired a company called First Source, which is a hosted buyer event for uh, specialty cheese, deli, seafood, a lot of different uh, products. We started doing those around the country. And that's when I launched the healthcare on my own. The uh, patient experience posing was the first one. And I did that. And now we're um, much larger. We have mm -hmm. close to 10 employees and we all work virtually. That's great. So it sounds like some of your own personal experience with the healthcare industry encouraged you to start that first patient experience symposium. Yeah, my mom um, had colon cancer at the age of 52, and I saw what it did to her, the experience she went through, and and, and I said I wanted to do something about it, and that was one of the reasons um, I started it. Uh, also, the, the, the patient experience and, and burnout and the caregiver experience, they're all a different tier. They're all related, and living with somebody with esophagus cancer has been really tough, and watching what they go through and going to hospital visits and being on hold and trying to get all the documentation and bad enough going through the treatments, but having to do all that on your own or for the caregiver to have to do it, which is myself, um, is pretty tough. And then my dad with, with Alzheimer's for the past couple of years, he just passed away, uh, taking care of him and bringing to hospital visits and so forth. The, the burnout factor really affects the patient experience and it's all related, uh, the patient experience, the caregiver experience and the burnout factor. So I wanted to address those with my conferences and hopefully make a change in some small way. Absolutely. What was what was one area that you noticed specifically with your situation that burnout was affecting your experience as being a caregiver or your family being a patient? Well, waiting, trying to make an appointment with the doctor, you get the appointment with the doctor, they cancel it, then you go in there, you finally get it, and the doctor gets called away while you're in the appointment with them because they're understaffed and they apologize and they'll see you next time. And it just it was a full circle. It just happened over and over again. And it wasn't just one hospital, it was two or three of them. So, and I understand they were over overworked, um, but it does affect the patient and the caregiver experience and really was, um, I don't know if I could do it by myself. Absolutely. And I mean, I think that we all agree that our healthcare system has really become so complicated. And um, I know as a physician, I help a lot of my friends and family, even just being an advocate and trying to help them understand the information, navigate the healthcare system, get their appointments. Um, so I'm really excited about what your organization is doing, Bill. Uh, I think that <clears throat> you're really making an impact in a positive way in our culture of medicine. 
And what I think is so unique about your organization is that you are embracing all aspects of health healthcare, starting from the patient experience to the front line, addressing leadership training, and all the way to the C-suite, where you also are, um, I think, turning things more into a solution-focused uh, symposium coming up in June. So that's going to be great. Right. All of our conferences offer solutions. Um, there's enough conferences out there to talk about what the problem is, and there is a problem, blah, 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 blah. But all of our conferences, when we do the research, we make sure that we bring in presenters that address the solutions to the problem. Um, you know, every now and then we get somebody on stage that doesn't do that. But for the most part, we've been pretty successful, and that's what's really made us stand out from the crowd. The, I, um, I agree completely. And, you know, awareness is is very important. I think it's very important to for our community to understand what the problems are and the underlying causes of those problems of burnout and um, even the mental health aspect that happens with burnout. Sure. However, I think focusing on a solution to the problem is also very important because a lot of people are not aware of how many solutions are out there to resolve burnout. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's great, Bill. So your upcoming symposium in June is June 23rd through the 24th in New York City. And it sounds like you have a very exciting and empowering lineup of speakers. We sure do. This conference I'm very excited about. We're kicking it off with uh, Vicki Murthy, the U.S. Surgeon General, welcoming everybody. Um, then we lead into Steve Strongwater, CEO of Atrius. And we have an equity piano led by Liz Bone. Um, and, and that's just the beginning. We have uh, Chris Sinsky from the American Medical Association on this day and a lot of others. On the Friday, June 24th, we uh, kick it off with Senator Tim Kaine talking about the Loan and Breen, um Act that was passed and other issues with uh, regarding health care that they're working on in Congress. And then we have Bob Chapman, who is the number three CEO in the world. Uh, he's going to be talking about what lessons can be learned in healthcare from what he's done in his company. He's done an amazing job uh, fostering yeah. the type of environment that's needed in healthcare. And then we go into a leadership panel and we have some, some great C-level folks on that panel, uh, which is led by the Gold Foundation, Elizabeth Cleek. Yeah, this is going to be... I'm really looking forward to it. I know I'm going to be there in person and I hope everybody listening can either tune in uh, virtually or attend the conference as well. And this is going to be, I think, a very impactful symposium. I think so, too. I think it should be uh, pretty impactful. And the website address is stophealthcareburnout.com. Okay. About the agenda. And I uh, hope we see you in New York City. Great. So if our audience is interested in signing up or registering, they go to stophealthcareburnout.com. Yes. Okay, great. And also, you know, I will be posting that information on my website as well under events, and you'll have access to this information as well through the podcast with Bill today. So I will be posting all of those links and information as well. All right. Thank you. Great. Well, is there anything else, Bill, that you wanted to share with our audience today about your organization or you and, and um, anything else that you would like our audience to know? Um, well, all of our conferences, they, they, they touch upon the software issues like cultural for burnout and so forth, the technology issues, and also the view of the uh, economics. So the view of the economics of burnout is always important to sell it to the sea level to get more addressed within the organization. So those three pillars are always addressed at our conferences, the technology, the software issues, and also the, um, the view of the impact economically. That's what makes the difference. Well, that's great. And then I, I also want to let the audience know that, you know, I want to thank you so much, Bill, for partnering with me on this podcast and ICD Healthcare Network. I'm really excited to be working with you on this project and collaborating with you and your team. Looking forward to I, it. I, we are too. Looking forward to working with you. Great. Well, everyone, I'm, in wrapping up today, I want to thank Bill Doherty again for being our very special guest and representing his organization, ICD Events and ICD Healthcare Network. I will be posting all this information on, you know, of course, YouTube and LinkedIn and uh, Twitter and Facebook, as well as my website. And Bill will also have this information as well available on his website. Right. All right. Thank you so much, Bill, for being here today. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye now.